everyone, welcome to 10K Dollar Day. This is a full episode of our imaginary luxury travel podcast. And today we're talking about leaf marketing, hot glue, and camels. Leaf the camels out of this. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode one... 16. 116. <laughs> We've had some technical difficulties in the past few days, and uh-huh. so I have no idea what this is recording, but we're happy to be here with 116. 116. Whoo, guys. Yeah. Should we tell them here? Yeah, we could tell you now. So listen, <laughs> we recorded this whole other 116. Yeah. We put it out there. Mm-hmm. We... Couldn't figure out where to record it. We recorded it in our in my parents' garage. Yeah. If you follow us on Instagram, you probably saw one oh, of yeah. the, the pictures that was posted of me literally on my knees uh, <laughs> figuring Trying out. Trying to figure it out. And I was really excited about it because it looked kind of ridiculous because we, I mean, my dad's like tennis rackets are behind us <laughs> and paper towels. Yeah. We were like, well, this is 10K. We yeah. record where we record. And then the elves got us. Yeah. It, everything just didn't work. It the 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 thing was black. The file yeah. was black. But well, we recorded the whole episode, you guys. I'm sorry. We're at episode one one six. We're we're here, and <laughs> I'm still forgetting <laughs> to mute my computer. Okay. Anyway, did, did I do it? I did not. She, oh. You didn't. A boop, boop. Anyway, so we recorded the whole episode. Whole episode. Entire thing. Entire thing. I put makeup on for it because makeup. it was a video. No, I came home, cleaned my face, yeah. put fresh makeup on. In fact, the whole night was a little crazy. It was. Oh, it that's was just right. a lot it of It was like, a lot. And then the video didn't happen. So then Allison paid Magic Wizards yeah. $14 to recover the file. Yeah. And they kind they of recorded. kind of did, but then it was like... We were glitching, so then I wrote them back, and I was like, it's glitching. Then they sent me a new file, and I looked yeah. at her, and I said, it worked. And then I went home yesterday to start editing said file for you guys, mm-hmm. and it did not work. It, yeah. the, the voices were sped up, and then it also cut off before yeah. happies, and we can't, we can't do that. No, we have to have happies. So here we are. <laughs> it's very late on uh, the night before release. Which we hate. We do, Which we, we hate. never record this late in the game. Nope. Ash is going to have to like push that blog out. Sorry, Ash. Yeah. But once again, you know we're very proud of the fact that we just get it done. That's right. We are consistent. I thought you were going to say committed, and I couldn't. And then I uncommitted to joining you. <laughs> it's okay. We're both. <laughs> All right. So anyway, yes. we are in um, the studios at Cineview again. Thank you, Cineview, for letting us use the space. And we just finished uh, our experience at PodFest 2020, yeah. which was the very first PodFest podcast conference we ever attended last year in 2019. And so it was kind of nice, a full circle yeah. kind of thing, because not only have we been to so, to so many that... We see friends now yep. when we go to these conferences. We see old friends. Mm-hmm. We're connected with new friends. But we were able to bring a bay. <gasps> we were able to bring a bay. Uh-huh. Someone is thinking of starting a podcast. I think she's going to do it. Yep. So Andrea can it. Yeah, she bought the domain name. She bought that. That it's means real. It re- it's real. Well, you, it, it means it's real for Andrea. It's it real for the world. Mean it's real for Allison. Yeah, it, it's real for the world. You guys. Do you guys? know how many domains Allison owns because she has a big idea and then just buys the domain name, just in case. I mean, it's not a bad habit. They're pretty cheap. Yeah. If you get it early, that's if you get the, it early. That's, that's I know. The hint. So we were able to bring Andrea Canny, one of our most supportive bays, mm-hmm. and we went to a lot of great seminars. We yep. connected with a lot of wonderful people. So hi to all of our new friends who um, who have an amazing podcast and work in the podcasting industry. And it's a really cool industry to be a part of because it's so supportive, and it's kind of so close to yeah. being really mainstream. Yeah. So. Um, it was a great weekend. It was really great. We had a great time. 
Yeah, what what was their favorite part of it? Ooh, uh, my favorite part was the little dinner we had with some of our, yeah. our new friends and old friends of the podcasting world. Mm -hmm. We kind of had this little cool kids table um, where uh, <laughs> a bunch of us got together after the second night and we all had dinner together and it was really cool. Um, Ever Gonzalez, who runs Outlier Pod Festivals, right? Multiple. Outlier Podcast Festivals. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, he kind of put it all together and we went around the room and we told everyone, you know, about our podcast and about us and everyone was just awesome. And then he was like, all right, how can we help each other? Yeah. And I was like, oh. You guys, if you want to be like someone, be like Ever Gonzalez. Yeah. I don't even know if you're going to see this episode ever, but I need you to know I have told everybody about you in the past 48 hours because he literally will look you in the eye and go, hmm, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. And then look at the next person and go, hmm, how can I help you? And then you'll say, I don't know, I need equipment for this. And he'll turn and he'll go, Joe, do you have equipment? Can you think you can help Andrea out with yeah. equipment? It was one of the most generous lovely supportive groups ever and yeah. we're so grateful to be invited into the club yeah yeah into the ever club the evergreens the evergreen club the ever the ever supportive. ever land ever the ever, ever, ever land. land it's a it's a workshop we're gonna keep we're workshopping that we're gonna keep uh fighting that for yeah. you later okay so here we are here we are and we're at the episode 116. I think we're going to move right over to obsessions. Yeah. Allison Burns. Yeah. What's your obsession? My new look. What look? Tell the people who are not watching the <laughs> oh, YouTube. Oh, that's right. Oh, pause. Yes. Pause. Oh, hi, yeah, everybody. Hi. I'm Lulu Picard. Oh, I'm Allison Burns. <laughs> And this is a YouTube... Oh, wait. First this of all... This is 10K Dollar Day. It's 10K Dollar Day, the comedy podcast about imaginary luxury travel, <laughs> where we take a fake $10,000 and we spend it in real places all around the world. And you can check us out on YouTube right now to see Lulu hysterically laughing at the fact that every time we forget to introduce this <laughs> podcast. I don't understand. We just spent 10 minutes telling you <laughs> we can't skip happies. <laughs> And yet we never. Have I know an what intro. it is. It's that we think you guys already know what this is. Like if you're listening, we're like they know us. Yeah, we just assume that we're all friends. Yeah, that's it. Why, yeah. why would you introduce yourself to your friend every time? Exactly. That's weird. Unless we have a friend who has face blindness, and we do have to introduce we do ourselves have a, every time. A friend who has face blindness. Yeah. So you know what? From now on, we're just gonna pretend you have face blindness. Yeah. Um, and hopefully remember. Yeah. So again. We're 10K Dollar Day. Here we are. Here we are. This is a video episode. Once a month, we release one episode that we have filmed, and you can watch it on YouTube. And guess what? We're going to have some more YouTube content coming real soon. Ooh. And by real soon, I mean... Like, hopefully in the next like, month. Because <laughs> it's a lot of work for us. It's a lot. We'll figure it out. Allison. We were talking about my new look. There we are. Okay. Guys, if you're not watching this on YouTube, I have a brand new hair color. It's like, well, it's kind of like four colors all in one. I've got like this dark root and then I've got like a red going and then like a really light kind of pinkish on the end, but it's kind of like a faded red. I'm really enjoying it. It's very different. I'm not quite sure what my husband thinks. His reaction was, wow. <laughs> but then he did say, we should shoot, which means... You know, at least he thinks it's cool enough to, like, take a photograph of. Oh, okay. Yeah. What does Hannah think? She has not seen it yet. Oh. I just, I came straight here to film, so it's her. new. Emma, actually, it's a funny. Hannah I is her six-year-old. I'm just going to yeah. keep reminding oh, us yes. that, that there are people Sorry, who don't, don't know, know us, us as well. Hannah's the six-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a big shock yeah. for her, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Emma likes it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm she sure likes she it. Um, but completing my new look... Um, I'm really excited about my new lips that, by the way, you didn't notice, which means you can't tell that I got filler. That's because I was distracted by how much gloss you have on them. You look like a Kardashian. Because I'm so excited about I got filler yesterday. And you can't even tell. I mean, you can if, you, if I told you, but you didn't walk in and you're like, ooh, your lips. So what you're saying is you spent how much money? $395. For me not to notice your lips? But I notice. And if I, I'm going to put a before and after picture right now, and you can tell. You can tell. I'm going to show you the picture you later. You do have a lot of gloss on. I know, but it's because I have a big lip now. So I'm... I'm Why don't you put gloss on when you have the little lips? They because make you have your, to draw them. I have to draw them Because it makes your lips look bigger much. when they're glossy. Yeah, I know. No. No, but they are, are no, they don't look bigger because of the gloss. They are bigger. But do you, do you hear... But are you understanding what I I'm saying? I think I'm having a midlife crisis. 
You've just changed your whole hair. You got lip injections. There's a lot happening right now. I think that's happening. Really? I like did a 180. Yeah, you kind of did. In the matter of 24 hours. Did you plan to do this yesterday? I know, not the hair. Really? Yeah, I walked, well, I knew I was getting my hair cut, but I didn't know I was going to do a total 180 look. I was like, I just, I need a change. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, um, my obsession is not any of that, but you might be obsessed with them as soon as I show them to you. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. What is it? I had my lips injected when I was two years old. They've been this big ever since. I know. You're um, lucky. <laughs> I'm lucky. then you don't even remember the pain. Was it painful? It was a little bit. I mean, they stick needles in your face. Why? Where in your face? Like on your lip? In your lips? In lip? your lips. In your lips. They were bleeding yesterday. Now they're just dry. Which is that's why, why I have so, so much, much gloss, gloss on. on. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> so and then they were also also they put numbing stuff all over your face and I accidentally swallowed some Ew. so I had it like on my tongue and I had to teach right after it and I was like they were dancing and I was like you guys this is really good you guys yo one two three four you guys look really good and then one of one of the kids did something funny and I was like <laughs> I'm trying to laugh I can't laugh for like an hour why didn't you take a video of that oh I don't know mm. okay my obsession yes Oh, I hear I hear a crinkling. You do? Yes. They are, get ready for this, stuffing, like Thanksgiving stuffing. Oh, yes. I love that. Flavored oh. almonds. <laughs> what? I'm going to shake almonds out. P.S. Sorry, coronavirus. My hand has been in this bag 24,000 times. That's okay. Um, if you go down, I go down. Okay. Stuffing seasoned almond halves. Are you ready? I'm going to put them on the, oh. on the little desky desk. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. They actually do have the appearance of stuffing. Yeah, go ahead and try that. Okay. It's like stove top, but with good fats. <laughs> what the? I know. It's crazy. What? I know. Like, I love them so much, and yet I can't stop giving them away to people and being like, just taste this, because they're so good. You guys. It tastes like stovetop. Like, crazy. Like, it is. Mm -hmm. It is that. Mm -hmm. There's no... It's just crunchy. And there's no, um, there's no wheat in it. I checked. Whoa. Didn't that change your life? Guess what brand that is? What? Gold Emblem, the CVS store brand. That's crazy. It's delicious. And I think they're limited edition. So everyone, if you see them at your CVS, hoard them. And if you don't like them, send them back to us. Yeah. Yeah, they're really good. Okay, we had to cut because Allison ate all of those almonds. I like refused to stop. I just wanted to clean the desk off. She Guys. was like, stop. I have to eat all these almonds. I said, okay. Those were so good. Yeah. Ooh. They're really good. Uh, a wish list. Okay, my wish list is, and this is going to make sense because you guys just heard our story. Mm -hmm. I want really, really great, travelable mm -hmm. camera equipment mm. and lighting equipment that we can take. That's light enough to carry, too. That's Don't light forget. enough to carry. It's the two of us yep. who travel, and, so, and sometimes Ashley, but... Yes. But it has to be relatively portable without yeah. buying a $250 Pelican case. Yes. And I saw some people walking around PodFest, and a lot of them had, like, those cameras on the little swivelly things, mm -hmm. but they were, like, video cameras. But I also need something that can be stationary so we can record these on the road. And you I mean need some like, really good lighting. Like Pat Flynn's switch pod. Yes. I, I just, Pat. Yeah. Pat. Give us a switch pod. Just give us one. Or a discount code. Or just give us one. <laughs> or a discount code. I, okay. We will absolutely tell everybody about it. We just did. And we did it for free. <laughs> this is why we're not making any money. It's true dollar. because we just, we talk about everything we love. People are like, why would I, I don't need to sponsor them. That's right. You know what? All of our 10K uh, days from now on, we'll just have blanks when we tell you what we love. And we're then we go. went to, and had this really great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mad Appetizer, Libs. yeah. It's Mad Libs, but a podcast. Uh, okay, so my wish list yeah. is 
Based on you. Okay. Because my hair is black. Yes. And I wish I could color my hair, but I can't. Well, if you bleached it out. I don't want to do that. But that would be terrible. Yeah, because I don't, I don't put anything, I don't really air, yeah. uh, use heat on my hair or anything, so I'm really nervous about bleaching it, but I would love to have like six weeks of crazy hair. Yeah. You, I've seen you do a purple tone before, or blue. You had some sort of like... That was my mom. It was? Yeah, I haven't colored my hair in probably 10 to 15 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Could you do that with like the overtone thing you want? It's expensive. Yeah. I don't have any money, guys. Yeah. So, you know what? Everyone, if you're looking at YouTube, take a screenshot and then, like, filter it and give me different hair. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. I just did a few poses for you. Yeah. Just so you could screenshot that. Okay. Um, oh, it's time for <gasps> 10K, 10K Day. Okay. I think we stopped the podcast right now. Uh, guys, it's been a really good run. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you or me? I'll go first. Okay. I'm going to Oman. Oh. Have you been there? No. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oman isn't a country that many people consider visiting, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, and it says that's a shame because <laughs> it actually <laughs> What? What are you quoting? It's not a website about Oman. Is it called visitoman.com? Probably. Okay. Um, it says it's a shame because it has a lot to offer and it is one of the safest countries in the Middle East. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So if you're looking to visit the Middle East and you're feeling a little apprehensive, go to Oman. Um, in Oman, you can visit forts and deserts, mountains, and beaches. Oh, that's everything. I know. Mosques and sogs. Hmm. How do you spell it? S O U. Oh, uh, Q S. Oh, Q S. I thought a souk was a market. A souk. Yeah. But I think that's S-O-U-K, so that actually might be a different word. Oh, I'm I don't not know. sure. You know what? And you can swim in stunning Wadis. Wadis? Wada. Wada. <laughs> 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 okay. So I'm going to stay at the Al Balid Resort Salaha. And it has only 136 rooms. I guess that's actually a lot. Um... And that it has this private beach, which I thought was really cool. Mm. Because only the people who are at this resort get to go. It has an infinity pool, freshwater lagoons, and water sports. And it's right next door to an archaeologi mm, archaeological <laughs> park and the Museum of the Land of Frankincense. What? You know I love frankincense. I love frankincense too. It's God in a bottle. Yeah, it is. And it's right there. Okay. It's a museum about frankincense? We're going to get there. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, because mm -hmm. I have to visit later. Okay. All right, so I, I got the most expensive room. Mm -hmm. It's a three-bedroom Royal Beach Villa and includes breakfast, okay? Okay. Um, it's right on the shoreline of this private beach. Okay. Which is awesome. And uh, there's a su superb sea view can be enjoyed while you swim and sunbathe, lounge and dine. You can take advantage of the kitchen, pantry, and wine fridge. Nice. There's also a music system, which is in your cool. room. Yeah, like All right. the room. And in villa dining service where you can host a pool party, a what? cocktail night, or a tailored dining experience. <sighs> this place is legit, and you are gonna realize why in just a minute. Two nights. Uh oh. Seven thousand nine hundred seventy-seven dollars and ninety-six cents. Eight thousand dollars for two nights. Yes. In Oman. Yes. Where they've already told you no one goes on vacation. Yes. So who's staying at this resort? I, I somebody famous and well off. Well, they probably have lip injections and have overtone in their hair. So then, uh, okay, I'm gonna. I'm in the capital area, which is um, Muscat. Yeah, I think that's right. No Muscat. idea. Mm -hmm. I think I'm right. Um, and I'm gonna go to the Grand Mosque. Now, this mosque is called uh, the Sultan Quabos. 
It's a mosque that can hold 20,000 worshipers. Okay, that sounds like a big number. Yeah. But how big are like football stadiums? Because I don't really, oh. I can't really equate you can't that. can't gauge that. Can you? No. Because I'm trying to think, oh, like how big is like the uh, the theater at the Stras? Like how many people can that hold? Well, the Finding Nemo Theater, I think, is sh- just shy of 2,000. Oh. So 10 of those. Well, I mean, that's pretty big. It's a big, big theater. That's a, that's a big And you know place. what? That doesn't help any of you who have never been to Finding Nemo <laughs> the Musical. That's not a relevant gauge for you. So... Uh, but I'm sure everyone has something that they can gauge that off of. Really? So just personalize it. People are going to be like, well, four people fit in my Toyota Camry. <laughs> and so... I couldn't even do the math on that one. I couldn't either. I was like, so t- 16,000, 2,500 Camrys? Maybe. We don't know how to do any know. of that math. But you guys figure that out and it's enjoy It's a that. lot. It also features the second largest handmade Iranian or Iranian? Iranian. Iranian rug in oh. the world. Wait, the second largest handmade rug. That's so many qualifiers. Yeah, it took 600 women four years to make this rug. That is double the time we've been podcasting. I know. And like a lot of women. No, it's just six women the whole 600. time. Six hundred. Oh, six hundred. Six hundred women. women How years. many of them would fit in that temple? Six hundred. Because the <laughs> there's only six hundred okay. of them. That was like a you, that was a a question that wasn't meant to be a trick question, but then you had a trick answer. <laughs> You're like there were six hundred women who weaved a rug. They walked into a mosque that hold that held twenty thousand. How, How many, many women <laughs> were in the mosque? It's like extra credit on the algebra exam. Oh, God. I would have failed. All right, so I'm going to visit this mosque, and <laughs> visitors are asked to dress modestly, uh-huh. which I love. And in, uh, in Oman, women are recovered to cover their hair, uh-huh. required to cover their hair. So it can be whatever color you so want. So I can have my red hair, but I'm going to cover it up. So I decided I needed to buy some pieces so that I can fit into the culture and respect their culture. So I found this website that is called Hot Hijab. Oh, cute. And it's really nice. It's like fashion. Like their stuff's really cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, um, it says it is a global community that celebrates and empowers the hij- hijab. Ooh. Hijab. Hijab. Yeah. Wearing women by designing innovative products fueled by an obsession with superior service and craftsmanship. Oh, I love that. Which I love because I feel like there aren't many places out there. They're like, oh, just here's a piece of fabric. But these women are like making it yeah. so that women are excited to be fashionable and also respectful. And so. they feel beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And on their website, you can take a quiz. What kind of hijabi are you? Really? Yes. So oh, I took okay. the quiz okay. to see what kind. And it's because they have different fashions with oh. each person, right? Oh, so if you're oh, okay, like, okay. so like if, if it was a, just a regular like American clothing, it would be like the hippie, the urban okay. woman, the whatever, okay? Got so it. I got the visionary. Oh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. It says, I am one of those rare people who don't just follow trends, which is true. I mean, you set them, okay? Uh, oh. Your ability to think creatively and shake things up inspires people around you to do the same. So whether it's your personal style, the way you approach your work, or the role you have among your friends, know that you inspire innovation in those around you. As you boldly for as you go boldly forward changing the world, we'll be right by your side making sure that your game is always fresh, fabulous, and quintessentially you. That is kind of spot on for you. Cool, right? Yeah, totally. So my collection that was paired with that is called Deco. Okay. And so it's inspired by the Art Deco era. Oh, like the 20s? I think so. Okay. Well, I don't know. You tell me because some of the things I got were a metallic underscarf in brushed platinum. Okay. Okay. A metallic jersey set and a satin edge chiffon set in pearl and black. And... 
just because I wanted to, I clicked on the luxury tab, which was not part of my, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what I got, but I wanted to check it out. And there was this gorgeous uh, black tie lace embroidered tulle hijab. Oh. 280 bucks for this. Wow. Gorgeous. So I ended up spending $505 on all of my pieces. Oh, so cute. Yeah. Check out the website, um, you guys, on our blog. You can see all these amazing pieces. All right. So then I go to lunch at Wadi Bunny Khalid. Khalid. What? Um, Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear? <laughs> yeah. And he went to Wadi Bunny Khalid. Um, I got the lunch buffet for $10.39. Oh, that's so cheap. Now, this is why... I had to get an expensive hotel. Everything else. Because I actually had a different hotel in the beginning. Yeah. And it was very affordable. And I, as I was going through the day, I was like, I cannot find anything oh. that is pricey. Yeah, I've been there. So in real life, you guys, if you'd like to travel to Amman, it, getting there might be expensive. But once you're there, it's a very inexpensive place mm. to stay and to shop and to eat. All right. So um, I got the vegetable curry rice, french fries, and a basic salad that was included in this little buffet. Yum. Yeah. Um, I'm hungry. I know. (sighs) Yeah. Okay. After that, this, right by this lunch place, Mm -hmm. is um, this crystal clear green water that you can swim in. Okay. Um, The pools are huge, and people love to swim in them during the... uh, during the, when it's the desert heat, it's really hot. Mm-hmm. So it's a perfect place, it says, for relaxing after your lunch. Now, I'm not allowed to wear a bathing suit. There's no bathing suits you have to, for women. You can't wear like a traditional bathing suit. You should be covered more than a bathing exactly. suit. Exactly. You made it sound like you have to be naked. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. And I was like, Alison it, Burns, here no, we go again. exact opposite, actually. So I read up on some of the blogs, and a lot of the American women said that what they did was they wore leggings, like black leggings. Oh, okay. With a really big men's t-shirt. Oh, I was like, perfect. It's like how I used to swim when I was 13. Exactly. When you were like, I don't want the boys to see my body. Yeah. Yeah. I just got a bra. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm going to jump in the pool. Um, Okay. Now, the restrooms behind the restaurant are free. However, you have to bring your own toilet paper. The restrooms are free, but you have to bring your own toilet paper. You do that in China. Really? I've been to several places where you... I mean, yeah. you'd want to bring your own toilet paper. Okay, yeah. so I bought on Amazon, they have what's called stall mates. What? It is flushable, individually wrapped wipes for travel. So they're like, you can, so that way you're not like carrying around a whole like thing of oh, toilet yeah. paper. They're these individual little like wipes yeah, yeah. for the bathroom. Huh. Stall mates. Okay. Ten ninety nine. Interesting. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. So if you're traveling and you want something that is travelable, I think I might be making that word up, but I uh, like it. Worked, it worked, though. Um, I mean, the real word's portable. But <laughs> I'm just going to let you keep saying it. As, you've said it like seven times Well, I think week. I'm going to coin that phrase. I think you should. I think you should. I think you should be wordable and you should <laughs> coin your phrase travelable. travelable. Um, are these wet wipes or like dry toilet paper that is in individual packaging? That is a very good question. Um, let's see here. Uh, I clicked on the link. I've uh, already, I already know. What is it? It is tra- unscented. So it must be wet. No? Because it's unscented? No. But it says with vitamin E. That's, and aloe. And I aloe, aloe makes Aloe makes little... me feel that they're moist. Yeah. I'm not sure, but they're flushable. Uh, chamomile, aloe, and cucumber. These are fancy, you guys. Ingredients. I mean, they have ingredients. It says no alcohol. It, it's our, there, Look, go to the ingredients. Water. Water. So it might be a little bit wet, but I don't think it's very wet. <laughs> I think it's very wet. The first ingredient is water. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Tear Directions. Tear open, unfold, wipe, use, and flush. That part I think we we probably figured <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, but here's what's cool. One box equals one tree. In a good way or a bad yeah, way? Yeah, help us and our partner. Help us and our partner trees for the future. Help us help, and uh, our... Help us, help us and our partner trees for the future in our mission to plant one billion trees. We plant one tree for every box of Stallmates wipes sold. Your purchase makes a real difference. One box equals one tree. Yeah, my concern though is that it looks like there's plastic around every single sheet. So that's great that they're planting trees, but oh, then right. is there plastic around every 
Do you see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. No, I get that. And anyway. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? It's still cool. It is cool, right? Yes. Okay. So, where am I? Okay. Here we go. Now I'm going to head over to the Museum of Frankincense. Oh, I'm very interested okay. in this. Um, it says, the displays are beautifully presented and takes you back to the origins of frankincense discovery in Oman. Now, I oh. did a lot of research and it was actually hard to find out what exactly was in this area. I think that there's... What, what do you mean? Like what the museum was. What they have, what the exhibits yeah, are because it's a free museum. museum. And it says displays are beautifully presented, but I couldn't, re there's no like real website. Is frankincense, we're not going to know the answer to this, but my question is, yeah. is it a tree? Like where do you get the oil I think it's a tree. From? So maybe it's like a grove of, of trees. trees. And then maybe it shows you like the history of, of how they harvest it, how they get the oil. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then how important it has been through history. Yeah, like and how the wise men had it. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then it's healing properties. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's got to be. Oil of the gods, man. All right. Yeah. Uh, some frankincense with a teaspoon of honey. Guys. You guys, coronavirus that out. Yeah, we're not going to get it. I don't have any frankincense, so I probably oh. will get it. <laughs> and I just ate her almonds, so... I'll get it too. Here we go. Okay, so I go to that museum. Cool, it was free. All right, now I'm done. I'm going to early dinner at Ub Ub Ubharb Ubharb brand. Hmm, I don't know. Um, but it says that this menu was developed to revive the riches of the lost city of Ubhar. Revive the riches of the lost city. Oh, yeah, ooh, a lost city. So then I was like, exciting. wait. Why was it lost? Where right. was it? Okay. Where did it go? So I found out that from 2800 BC to 300 AD, Ubhar was a city said to rival paradise. And it prospered for over 3,000 years on the trade of frankincense. <gasps> but now it's lost? I don't know how it got lost. I mean, I, I think it just means it died off. It died off. Yeah, probably. Right? Yeah. I couldn't find prices, but it did have $2 you signs. But could go, you can go take a tour of it like it's, they a, have... it's a restaurant <laughs> oh of the city yeah i missed okay i missed the connection okay the <laughs> the dinner that I, early dinner remember i said the words early dinner yeah kind of so that's at this place called ubarb and that menu is developed to revive the riches uh -huh, of it uh -huh. so it's like based on what the city used to be god it's like a tribute menu yeah god yeah it. are you eating frankincense because i will say frankincense does not taste good no no, no i don't think so okay good. yeah because it didn't actually have any like real information, but the reviews said it ranged from like twenty to fifty dollars per person, mm -hmm. and that's actually pretty high in that area. So I highballed it even more, tipped a hundred percent, and I'm gonna spend a hundred bucks. Okay. On dinner. All right. After that, I am going on a sunset camel safari. <laughs> on camels? Yes. That's cool. I'm gonna depart the hotel by jeep to the sand dunes. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to travel across the sand dunes on my camel, starting at 5.30 p.m. And then I'm going to go to this little desert camp, and they do some local entertainment. Like? Like gypsy music and dancing. Okay. Then I'm going to have some refreshments, followed by a smorgasbord of <laughs> Rajlatha, Raj, 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 Rajathani cuisine. Rajathini. I don't know that word. Rajas. Well, neither do you, so I guess it's fine. Uh, and then I return to the hotel by Jeep by 11 p.m. Oh. Yeah. That sounds lovely. Right? So, again, I couldn't really find out how much this was going to cost because it just kept telling me how great the experience the was, ca the, camel the camel ride. Thing? So, um, I Googled how much are camel rides through Oman. Yeah. And then uh, this was the answer I got. A reasonably good riding camel is likely to cost somewhere over a thousand USD, just about anywhere in the Middle East. And Wait, I was that like, "That sounds like you're buying the camel." Exactly. How cool is that? Wait, did you buy a camel? So I bought a camel. I'm just gonna gift it to the camel safari people afterwards. Oh, you're just gonna give them a free camel? Yeah, I'll be like, "Dude, take care of my camel." Okay. Yeah, and you know how you like get pictures of like when you adopt kids on like uh, through like other organizations yeah, that yeah. live in other countries. I'm gonna be like, every once in a while. Like, give me, like, a little hoof print on, like, oh, yeah. a pad and, like, send me a picture. Yeah. So let me see he's doing okay. You know what I found out this week? What? 
the camels, that there is a guy, I don't know him guys, but there is an animal trainer, whatever, person who lives near Orlando in yeah. Kissimmee who owns camels, has a camel ranch oh. out there, and he hires them out for Christmas shows, <gasps> including the Rockettes show oh. in, in New York. And there are like 25 camels that live in Kissimmee. Do they have like a petting time? Would you I go don't visit think so. Them? No, no, no. They're they're professional camels. Oh, no pictures, please. No, mm -mm, no, no. They don't want the paparazzi. They don't want the humparazzi there. I was waiting. I knew. Oh, I was like, I what? wish it didn't take me She's like one for, trial yeah. through, but it, humparazzi was worth it. I yeah, think. Yeah, humparazzi. <laughs> Humpa, humparazzi. We should have stopped while we were ahead. Yeah. Go on. Or a hump. <laughs> Okay, so I'm done. My total is $9,604.34 in Oman. Because you bought a camel and stayed at an $8,000 resort. Yeah, otherwise it would have been like $200. You know what that means? <gasps> we, we could, could do it. it! Okay, so my place, oddly, I think is near you. And you know what? It may not be because oh. we both don't know geography. But yeah. I think... These two places are very close. Okay. I'm going to Socatra Island in Yemen. Yemen. I think it's near Oman. It sounds like it could be. Because they both have N sounds at the end of their things? Yeah. Because like one is Oman and one's Yemen. Yemen. Well, we're guessing. Uh, anyway, I'm going to Socatra Island, Yemen. Oh. <laughs> is uh, Oman near the Indian Ocean? I mean, it's near something because, remember, it has a beach. A beach. Well, the island of Socot Socotra is an archipelago in the Indian Ocean. But here's the thing, guys. It's almost completely untouched by other influences. Ooh. So a third of its plant life is found nowhere else on the planet. Oh, I love that. There are birds that only live on that island. Um, the only native mammal is bats. And... Oh, this has to be near, this has to be near oh. Oman, because some people think it's the original Garden of Eden. <gasps> it definitely is. This is an amazingly connected episode yeah. of 10K Dollar Day. This okay. is like the Middle East. This is the Middle East. This is a biblical episode. Yes. Of epic biblical proportions. Okay. <laughs> so, Island of Socatra, there are no roads. Oh. They have caves, they have paths, they have shipwrecks, and that's it. Wow. And and trees that they don't have anywhere else in the world. Oh, wow. I know, doesn't that sound How do they crazy? get around? Just animals? And uh, walking? Yeah, 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 yeah. There are no Oh, I could no give cars. you my camel so you can get around. How am I going to get the camel to the island of Socotra? Uh, can't I just, it's, we're near each other. Okay, just I'll walk take your over. camel. Uh, yeah, because I didn't get a car or anything, so yeah, yeah I'll take your camel. So, first of all, no um, hotels. Mm. So, I had to buy a base camp tent. No. Uh-huh. This is extreme for you. Uh, yeah, we're 116 episodes in, so I've, I've got to stretch my boundaries a little. Yeah. You know? Gosh. So, I bought a base camp tent from North Face. Oh, good, it's good a brand. two-meter dome. Mm -hmm. All the reviews are five stars. Oh, I love that. They say that it sleeps eight people. Okay. No. Oh. Eight people. Look. <laughs> but people, like next to each other. That's the thing. People who camp are, I guess, really okay with personal space. Like, yeah. get close to me. Because they have a graphic on the North Face um on the Northway site, and we'll have a link to it on the blog that you can look at. It's ridiculous. This base camp tent is a circle, and they have six people. They have like like six infographics of like people sleeping top to tail, literally next to each other, yeah. like sardines. Yeah. And then one person on the top, and then one person on the bottom, and that's how they say you're supposed to sleep eight people. Well, it probably is warmer that way. I don't even know if it's warm or cold there. Oh right, right, right. It's it's so tight. It's ridiculous. It's like it's like when you when you're making Totino's pizza rolls, yeah. and you just want to make the whole bag even though it doesn't fit on the sheet tray, yeah. and you just keep trying to like yeah puzzle piece them onto the sheet tray. That's what that graphic looks like. That was a really good analogy. Thank you. Everyone is gonna get that. You know what I mean. 
Yeah. You're like, what? Just one more. Just one You're more. You're like, I don't want to have to put away five pizza rolls. Yeah. So just, just, oh, just like get out there. Okay. So, uh, that base camp tent is $5,500. Uh oh, here we go. It is for real campers. This yeah. is not a luxury tent. No, this is not glamping. But it is sturdy. Okay. It is apparently, um, it can, it can be an extreme cold. It can be an extreme heat. Okay. All, all the things. Love it. So I figured I had to get a sleeping bag. Well, yes. Also. Uh -huh. So from North Face, I got the North Face, I think the word is dolomite. I, it might also be dolomite. I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, one duo sleeping bag for $219.95. That's a good price. Okay. So I have okay. a sleeping bag and I have a base camp tent. Okay. I'm on Socotra Island. I told you that their native mammal was, do you remember? Their native, you told that me? That there was one mammal that's native. Oh, bats. Okay, bats. And we're in the Garden of Eden. Ooh. So I put those two ideas together in my head. Okay. And do you remember that one of Batman's villains was, oh, you might know, was played by Uma Thurman. Uh... Do you know what I'm talking about? Batman's villain. Was she played by Uma Thurman? It's not Catwoman. No, it's Poison Ivy. Oh. Right, Garden yeah. of Eden plus Batman equals Poison Ivy. Gotcha. Are you following yeah, my yeah, logic yeah, totally, on that? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Right. So I'm gonna make a Poison Ivy costume. Oh. Well, right, yeah. I mean, why not? That's, also guys, I planned this day like five days ago, so that took me by surprise too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As I was scrolling, I was like, that's what I thought of? <laughs> what, what, how drunk was I? All right, so I'm gonna make a point. I really should have read this through before we started filming because this is just some, this is bad crazy. You're gonna, you're gonna have to bleep that out. There's no other way to say it. Oh, hey, it works. Okay. In the theme of things. So I went to eBay.com. Yes, you did. And I bought a bag of leaves. Do you know that people sell bags of leaves? It's just a bag of leaves. I mean, someone sold a Cheeto that looked like Jesus. That's true. Listen, they, whomever is real raking leaves. up, listen, whoever, <laughs> yes, they're real. And whomever is this marketing genius raking up his leaves in New Jersey and then writing this blurb about it and putting it on eBay, Props to you, and also will you come work for ten k dollar day? Yeah, send us a. You don't even. Well, that was your your interview. No, because you're hired. Here's the blurb: natural, organic, wild caught leaves. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 it's, like it's really no, hard it's to like catch. One of those things where they blow the money around. Oh yeah, and no. you have to catch the dollars. Are you like hunting them? You're only allowed to get them if they fall naturally off the tree. You can't like pick them. You can see them like down there waiting. Yeah. Fresh fallen from the wilderness forests of northern New Jersey. Oh. Like these are so exotic. Yeah. Right? New Jersey leaves. One time deal, the real deal. Don't be caught with those plastic factory facsimile leaves. Participate no. in the ephemeral art of Mother Nature herself. Bag of leaves. No risk. 14 day return. Buyer pays return shipping. That's amazing. You are a genius, Jersey man or yes. woman. Was there a name? I didn't co I didn't copy that, but I did put the link. So the link will be in the blog, and I'm not sure. It's eBay, so maybe the – I don't it, know how yeah, long yeah, yeah. that link is live. Ooh, but Jersey man, come on. Work guys, for 10K. Get on that blog like today or yes. actually tomorrow because we're, we're shooting so late. And um, look that up because there's some guy making uh, money off Bag of Leaves – and how much money is he making off that bag of leaves? $98.95 is what you can pay for wild caught leaves fresh fallen from the wilderness forests of northern New Jersey. $98 for leaves, you guys. That he raked up. That he probably had his kid rake up. Yeah. It was like his chores for, and then he makes 100 bucks. And he probably only pays his kid 20 if he does even that, I yeah. mean, the buyer has to pay return shipping. He may charge his kid to rake the leaves. That's insane and so smart. So smart. What do I have around the house that I can sell? Uh, you could sell wild, you could sell wild caught sand. Sand. Wild, wild caught, caught sand. sand. From St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah. Don't be fooled by that Michael's brand sand. Sand. 
that all of the old women are buying to put oh, in their potted plants. That's right. You want a piece of Florida. Yeah. Real estate. You want a piece of Florida, Florida real, real estate. estate. I think we're on to something. I think we just funded our whole 2020 tour. <laughs> Get ready, you guys. That. Okay. So I've got... <laughs> so step one for my costume. <laughs> Is a bag of leaves. Got it. Check. <laughs> All right. Because I'm trying to make a poison ivy costume that's also like Garden of Eden. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, I what do I, what do I, where do I put these leaves? What do I put them on? Um, and I found a nude bodysuit. Ooh. That's covered with rhinestones. <laughs> so it's like you're naked, except there's rhinestones all over your <laughs> body. And you're going to put the leaves on the body. Suit. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be like sparkle leaves. Oh, it's going to be sparkle leaves. <laughs> Wait. I'm going to be the most glam Eve ever. Side note. Yes. So this is a true story. When Emma was at her like second or third year at the school that she was at a few years ago, we went, were invited to a Halloween party okay. of some people in the area that are pretty well off. So it was a big deal. And it was a costume party, of course, for Halloween. And we walk in and the parents of this child are dressed as Adam and Eve. And they have on just like a nude, like he has on nude shorts and she has on a nude bikini. The parents? The parents. And they have hot glued leaves to their body. No, no, no. That's not hot, true. That's I, not true. That's one not, million. To the what? point where I was like, how is that on you? And she's like, it's hot glue. And I was like, did that burn? She's like, yeah. Wait, so they, they hot no, glued wait. leaves. How many? A lot. It was, well, I mean, it was like this. Like covering, it was like a line of leaves, all, like all the way down her arm, um, up to her shoulders, across her shoulder blades, down and like over the bathing suit then, but then down onto her stomach, down across the bottom part of the bikini, and then down one of her legs like in a circle. Hot glued to the body. I would have, I mean, first of all, I never would have even tried that because that to me instant, I mean, I already know I don't want to do that, but after one. Yeah. After yeah. one, I she said out. She was like, well, the trick was you put the hot glue on the leaf so it gets a little less hot and then stick it. You don't put the hot glue directly on the skin. I was like, oh, okay, thanks for the tip. <sighs> yeah, uh, crazy, right? And then you have to take it off. Yeah. Think about the hair. What if you have hair on your yeah, arm? Oh, it, exactly. will, it will pull for sure. Do Isn't you that crazy? think that they thought that was the most brilliant thing in the world or do you think they regret it to this day? Oh, I think they thought it was brilliant. Did it look really good? I mean, it, it looked okay. Did it have hot glue strings everywhere? Because there, really there, it... there was a few that like were <laughs> hanging from the body. I mean, they're, they're pretty eccentric. So it was really Did funny. Did they invite kids to that party? Yes. Oh, yes. They and had they a, were They had a magic the show for the kids. <laughs> oh, yes. Guys, I, I have more stories. I can't wait to be super rich so that I can do stuff like that and just be eccentric. <laughs> And just, yeah, have no because apologies. Because if Allison and I ever <laughs> hot glued leaves, there's, there's only two ways you can ever hot glue leaves to your body. A, you have to be super rich, or you have to be like a performance artist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Doing it for yourself. And just, <laughs> I still don't think I'd know, do it. Because I, I I've accidentally. It's hot. It's really hot. It hurts. Yeah. It's hot glue. It's glue that it's starts melted. solid. Yeah. That then melts to a temperature where it becomes liquid and then comes out of a metal tip that you're not supposed to touch. <laughs> That's plugged into the wall. Oh, crazy, right? I like that the plugged into the wall was the biggest part for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just mean like you always know don't That's touch plugged anything. Into the wall. Don't like stick your hand near anything that's plugged into the wall. That's a lot of electricity, a lot of heat. It's a lot of power. You know? I t you know, guys, every episode of 10K Dollar Day, you get one useful fact. <laughs> or a fact you've known since you were seven. <laughs> it's nice to reiterate things, okay? <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so anyway, get this bodysuit. Yeah, which is much smarter. Um, and there's rhinestones everywhere. I got it from a place called Amakana. <laughs> And it was $325. Ooh. But it's, you know, it's just got like rhinestones yeah. all over it. That's intense. And then I realized, what kind of costume am I making? It's a, a nude bodysuit mm -hmm. and, and a bag of New Jersey leaves. 
So uh, I realized that I wanted to like get in shape. Okay. For this costume. Okay. So I got a subscription to Equinox, the oh, gym. Oh yeah. That I belonged to for like three cool months last year. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Um, I got the the highest access that you can get access to all Equinox clubs. Mm -hmm. There's an initiation. Do you know how much the initiation is at at Equinox? <sighs> Probably like one hundred and ninety nine dollars. How about five hundred dollars? What? Five hundred dollars. Come on, Equinox. To tell someone you want to start working out. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. Then the monthly. How much do you think the monthly? Well, now I'm gonna is. go. I'm gonna go with what I said first. One hundred ninety-nine dollars for the monthly. Yeah. That is really not right. Oh. I mean, I got the top tier, and the lowest tier is more expensive than that. What? Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you're not, um, if you have, did not listen to 10K Dollar Day last year, like if you've just picked up, you should know that for three glorious months in 2019, I had a, I almost said relationship. <laughs> I had a relationship with Equinox. Oh, I mean, just, it would, I don't know why that word almost came out of my mouth, because it, I did not have one with Equinox or anyone. Uh, but... <laughs> Glorious months in 2019, I had a membership at Equinox. Guys, I know it's expensive. Yeah. I did not have this worldwide access membership. I had the the normal you can go to any Equinox in the city membership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I signed up when initiation was free. They do oh, that twice that's a year. A big deal. But I paid $240 a month. And let me tell you, I loved every minute of it for several reasons a they're all clean yeah b they all smell good they smell like a spa c c um <clears throat> they have showers and saunas and steam rooms okay d i could take a shower anytime in the city during the summer before I went to an audition or an oh, important gotcha. meeting yeah, I remember or whatever, you saying that. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like I always had this beautiful, clean shower bathroom situation in the city available to me no matter where I, where I was, which is a big deal in the summer yeah. in New York City. So super happy with it. The monthly for the worldwide access is $305 a month. Oh my gosh. There are also other things you can upgrade Equinox. to. Equinox. If you listened to the episode where I talked about Equinox before, which was a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. you may have heard this, but I need to tell you, if you're new, what my favorite upcharge at Equinox is, which I could not afford, but some, someday, someday, um, you can pay, I think, an extra $40 a month. They At your home location, they will give you a locker. Mm. And when you work out, you can put your workout clothes in a bag and they'll do the laundry for <gasps> you and put it in your locker so when you come back the next day you have your clean Ugh. workout clothes okay. in your locker that would be cool that's insanely cool yeah you never have to carry your workout clothes around you never have to wash them you never anything. yeah that would be really cool i mean that's i'd appreciate that super fancy Right? <sighs> okay, so anyway, a year of subscription to Equinox yes. plus the initiation. Yes. There is a $400 promotion going on right now that okay. you can take $400 off the initiation. Okay, and you're paying the whole year. Mm -hmm. Okay. $3,760. Ooh, all right. I love it. Yeah, I know. It would make you so happy. I went every day. Yeah, I know. Because I felt that you if had I didn't, to, yeah. I was losing like $10. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now I, I know I have a gym membership to get ready for my trip to Socotra Island mm -hmm. in Yemen, which means I don't have a lot of money left and I have to go on like this super like shred diet. Okay. So I found a protein powder called Garden of Life. Oh, that matches the theme. Right? And everything that I eat that day, yeah. I'm just going to drink protein shakes. Perfect. Because I'm, you know, 
on a cleanse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is thirty three fifty nine oh, for that canister. Bad. That's pretty cheap. That is pretty cheap. I think. Yeah. And that brings my total <gasps> to nine thousand nine hundred thirty seven dollars <gasps> and forty nine cents. Ooh. Right. Nice. And that was my day in Socotra Island. I love it. Yum it. All right. Well, that is what we would do if we had ten thousand dollars. That's right. In and were you in a city in Oman or just Oman? Uh, I just wrote Oman. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a small. I think it's a small area. Country. So Oman or Socotra Island, Yemen. But if we had $10,000 to give away, this is where we would do it. Allison. I found a charity that's called The Art of Living. It was established in Oman in 2001. It is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving society by strengthening the individual, which I love that phrase. They do this by offering programs that, get ready for it, eliminate stress. Oh. And create a sense of belongingness. Yes, please. They restore human values and encourage people from all backgrounds, religions, and cultural traditions to come together in celebration and service. Um, they also offer disaster relief and environmental sustainability. So they really, the art of living is across all aspects. I love that. Yeah. They go into every, That's you know, a lot of it's programs. It's a lot of programs. Yeah. And they've only been around since 2001, so. Wow. Yeah. Um, I found an organization called Islamic Relief USA. It, there, were, there weren't any organizations specifically in Socotra Island. Yeah. I mean, I told you there's like no roads, there's no anything. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but Yemen is being called the world's worst humanitarian crisis. And Aww. it is completely off our radars here in the United States because we have so much other news that we pay attention to that may not be as important. But anyway, um, over 20 million people in Yemen are at risk for famine. And aid agencies are desperately funneling as much aid as possible to at-risk families. This is from the Islamic Relief USA website, straight from there. So uh, they, they help um, bring food in and resources in and all that kind of stuff because it, there really are so many people in Yemen that are suffering and don't have a lot of resources. On top of that, Yemen, Yemenis, oh, Yemenis are currently experiencing the worst of winter, adding misery to the suffering. Donors like you ensure that families in need are prepared to make it through the frigid temperatures because Islamic Relief USA provides food, medical aid, blankets, and more during the winter. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so of course I'm also giving them my base camp tent uh, yes. and sleeping bag. Wonderful. But and the camel. And the camel, they can, can have, have the, the camel. camel. Um, but that's a really great organization and it's actually based in the United States. So the links to both of those charities will be on our blog. So definitely check that out. Perfect. Yeah. What about our Patreon? Oh yes, you guys, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash 10k dollar day. And for as little as $2 a month, mm -hmm. you can become a sponsor of this show. Um, it is our passion project and it is something that we don't actually make money doing, but in order to cover our cost, we ask our listeners to kind of, if you like, us and if you like the show and if you want to support us check out that page and really any little bit helps us kind mm -hmm. of create what we're doing and keep it going for years and years to come <laughs> we've committed to going to at least five or six actually you're going to seven cities this Ooh, year seven cities um and i think i'm going to six right because yeah. you're doing one without me uh, she's gonna go speak at a conference guys Ooh. without me for the first time <laughs> i have ready. no idea what she's going yeah. to talk about uh however we have committed to going to six or seven places for the rest of this year we are going to announce that a little later like as far as which cities it is and the exact dates we do have them we do but mm -hmm. you know we have to wait and figure out when we're supposed to announce that and so that those Patreon dollars really help us with our travel costs. And hopefully we're coming to your city and you will come see us. And that would be amazing because we really want to bring our show all over the country. And we met some people at PodFest actually who are going to help us do it. That's right. And it feels really good to have people in the podcast industry go, um, we think you guys should be in front of more people. And we go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> put us yes put us there please um and something that you can do to help that actually whether you are a patreon member or not is if you enjoy this podcast do us a favor and like tell somebody yeah. this week tell a buddy because there's lots of people that don't even know what podcasts are so this might involve you saying hey there's an app on your phone and you listen to it this way and check out this podcast and all that kind of stuff but if each one of you told one friend this week 
guys, I can do the math on that. We would double our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I was really thinking. I was like, what would it be? Yeah, what would it be? Yeah. Um, and so we would love to do that. Thank you to everybody who – our Sunday social this last weekend was – It was really good. Popping. Yeah. Uh, so thanks to everybody who's been joining us on that. If you don't know what that is, every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time – we go live on our Facebook group, which is 10K Dollar Bays, and we go there and we have a little conversation with you from 9 to around 9.30, yeah. sometimes a little longer. Um, it's been nice to hear, I mean, actually everybody's sick right now. Everybody has been telling us they're sick, so I hope everybody feels better. Yeah, feel better. Um, and we would love to hear from you anytime, there or on social media. Our Instagram is is alive and kicking. So is our Twitter, our Facebook, our email. You can always email us at 10 day at gmail.com, and we will get back to you. That's right. Uh, we love hearing from you. And thank you. Oh, we had a new review this week. We did have a new review. It was called Better Than Cats. And we'll take it. And I don't know if he means the musical or the movie, but I'll take it either way. Yeah. 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 Better Than Cats. Thanks, Dan. Thanks. We appreciate it a lot. Um, we appreciate all of our reviews, guys. It makes us yes, so happy. You. And it helps us in some weird algorithm way that we don't really understand. No. Nope. There's lots of things out of our control. <laughs> uh, we always end with what's your happy. So, Allison Burns, what's your happy? Um, my happy is that today, while I was getting my hair done, I actually was able to interview my hairdresser oh, for right. this week's upcoming 10K Saturday. And... I am one of those people that I normally interview people I know pretty well. Yes. And this was one of my first times that I interviewed someone that I, I am just really an acquaintance with. However, now I know a lot more about her. And I do have to say, like, it was really cool. She, we didn't, it was a little bit of more rushed than I would have liked because we did it while my hair had color on it. And <laughs> yeah. she was like, we have about 20 minutes. Is oh, this enough okay. time? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then she had people after me. Oh, yeah. So it was a little bit more rushed than I thought, but... I was surprised by that because normally I'm like, okay, question, question, question. Yeah. But she started saying some things that all of a sudden I was like, oh, I want to talk to you about that longer. Um, and so it was actually nice even after we finished and after we stopped rolling, we kind of continued this really cool conversation and how our lives were actually very similar and some things she had been through and I had been through. And I was like, it, it was just a really cool moment to kind of connect with her and this new friend and someone who is now also a, a new fan of the podcast. And yeah. she was like, my husband's going to be excited to listen. And um, so I'm excited for you guys to hear her this Saturday. Um, yeah, so And what's her out. name so they can Her name sure is Rachel. And then uh, you'll definitely want to follow her on Instagram too. Her Instagram is Trust Your Hairdresser. Perfect. And she posts some amazing pictures. She's amazing. So that was my happy today. Yeah, um, I hope that's how you guys feel about all of the 10K Saturdays, that you have gotten to know someone a little bit better and that maybe you have something in common with them, even yeah. if uh, you saw their picture and maybe you were like, I don't know that I have something in common with you. You're a different age than me or a different ethnicity from me or it just looks like you're just a little different, whatever whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of what I hope yeah. from the 10K Saturdays. And we're, Alsa and I are the lucky ones because we get to sit in there and have those conversations, but... I hope that's what you guys get out of the conversations because I think we've had some really special yeah. conversations through our bonus episodes. Uh, my happy is something that I often feel, uh, but especially any time that we are around a lot of podcasters. So we just came out of this conference last weekend and I am happy that I have a partner that I podcast oh. with because there are a lot of people who are doing solo podcasts mm -hmm. and it's true. hard. Yeah. So if you listen to a podcast and it's one person and they keep making it happen and they keep getting it out and you love that content, guys, you better support that podcast. Yes. You need to tell people about it because it's a lot of work and most podcasters are, are single yeah. podcasters. And I know that if I, you know, I just don't have a lot of time this week, I can tell Allison, hey, I don't have a lot of time. Can you pick this up for me? Mm -hmm. And I, she can do the same. And we have Ashley as well. And now we have some other people behind the scenes who are helping out. And it makes a huge difference. Even when, I, I don't know, I might have given up. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, I might knows? have given up. Yeah. But I won't give up because I know that I have to do it for Allison. <laughs> I mean, versa. I also like to yeah. give up. I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to let Allison down. So um, that is my happy. And before we go into our credits, we have to thank Buzzsprout. Yes, thank you. Buzzsprout is our hosting partner. 
that means if if you don't have a podcast, uh, that means we record our podcast and then we we put it on Buzzsprout's page and then they send it out to whichever player you are listening to it right now on. Ah, ended on a preposition. Sorry, really <laughs> tried to make that happen. Didn't work out for me. However, Buzzsprout is awesome. And if you guys are starting a podcast or thinking about it, Look at them first. Yes. If you want to know why, feel free to email us. We will be more than happy to tell you. But they are so supportive mm -hmm. and they are truly invested in helping us grow and helping us learn more. And they provided our tickets through a contest that they were running um, for us to go to PodFest. And we would not be able to attend That's conferences right. like that without their help. So Buzzsprout, all of you guys there, we are 100% fans of yours. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and I don't think a lot of podcasters feel that way about their hosting sites. Right. But we did. Also, they throw a party. Ooh, they threw a party. <laughs> they threw a party at a bowling lane. I did not bowl. But it was still fun. Yeah, it was great. It was really good. I mean, there was a lot of food and Drinks. Food and drinks. So who needs to bowl? <laughs> Why would you give an open bar to people who are then holding heavy things? Well, I mean, I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So are we ready to go into the end? Yeah, the credits. Let's do it. Here we go. 10K Dollar Days produced by Ash Burns. Music is by Stan Collins. Graphic art is by Jacob McAllister. 10K Saturday voiceover is by Charlie Hume. And thanks to Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout for everything they do. Hey. All right, guys, we're going to end this the way we end every single episode, even the one we taped that you didn't see <laughs> <laughs> with friends like us. Who needs amenities? <laughs>